OK, hello. Good morning and welcome for those joining us live in the room this morning. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Uh, my name is David Bell. I'm the entrepreneur in residence here at Anglin Ruskin University and joined by some of our amazing team, which you'll hear from in a moment. Uh, we'll ask them to introduce themselves, but you're here to find out more and learn more about the exciting Think Big competition that is kicking off very, very shortly. And in fact, I believe we've already started to make the big announcements and tell everybody it's here, it's happening and how you can get involved. And this morning, we're going to cover quite briefly, but in some detail about what the competition is, how you can participate, how you can get your entry to the right person, how to create a video, what that video needs to um, contain and how to upload that video as well. And we'll go through some answer some other questions and give you that all important information. But before we jump in uh, two feet first and get into that, let's just find out uh, who the team are that sit behind this as well. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Catherine first just to say hello and good morning. Thank you, David. Hello, I'm Catherine Footick, Student Enterprise and Entrepreneurship Manager at Anglia Ruskin University, and I look after the Anglia Ruskin Enterprise Academy team, otherwise known as AREA, who are helping to deliver the Think Big AIU pitching competition, amongst other things, at AIU in the enterprise and entrepreneurship environment. So nice to see you all. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, in the same room, sitting right next to you is Christina. Good morning, Christina. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Ayonita and I'm the Enterprise Entrepreneurship Administrator at the Anglo Enterprise Academy and I support the delivery of our events and activities including the Think Big AI Pitching Competition. Thank you very much Christina and uh, joining us in a very flash apartment there Abhinav, uh, <laughs> tell us who you are and how you can help everyone here today. <laughs> Good morning David. Uh, yes, I'm Abhinav. I'm the Student Enterprise Officer for um, Chelmsford Campus. Um, I look after the programs and other events and activities run by area in Chelmsford. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. There is some other uh, important integral people part of this team not on the call this morning, but you will get to meet those, uh, no doubt, as you proceed through the programme. So let's talk a bit about what the uh, Think Big competition is and what it can do to help you um, and your big idea because what we're looking for is people that have an idea now this doesn't mean that you necessarily have a business it means you have an idea that possibly could be a business maybe it could be a not-for-profit or a social enterprise maybe you've just got this idea and you don't even know what to do with it or where to take it well the competition is a way of you um, taking your idea sharing it with others gaining feedback gaining support to help you take that idea to the next level and you never know you might get some all important investment as well from our investors so i'm going to hand over to catherine just to answer a couple of questions about the pitching competition uh and who is it open to catherine who can access this is it open for everybody is it certain years is it people that are luminized that have left come back how can it work who's it for Yes, so the competition is open to any current um, ARU student or ARU recent graduate. So when we say recent graduate, we mean up to three years. So if you graduate in the last three years, you are eligible to enter. So uh, that is the criteria for entry for this particular competition. OK, and I, I know this has been asked before and we have had scenarios where students from other universities or outside of Anglin Ruskin University want to participate. Can they? Are they allowed to? Yeah, absolutely. But one member of the team must be a current ARU student or recent graduate. So you can be outside of ARU, but you must partner and team up with somebody who is currently an ARU student or an ARU graduate. There we go. So it's open to all. Um, which is the the right, really important part. But if you're not part of Anglin Ruskin, you need to find a ARU ARU partner to board with. Uh, Christina, um, how do we enter? This is kind of quite important because people have got their idea. They're thinking, OK, how do I now get and participate in this programme? What is the quickest, easiest and simplest way to get involved? So every time you see a post about the thing began pitching competition, you will see the application form with the link. So you just need to press on the link, fill in the application form, and do not forget to submit your one minute video pitch where you state the problem or the customer need, your solution and your vision for success. Yeah, and what we've done, Christina, we've made this entry process 
very seamless, as simple as possible, because what we want is them great ideas. We don't want you to be bogged down in entry paperwork and having to write uh, your life story and stuff like that. We've kept it very simple. Um, and if I remember rightly, and do correct me, Christine, it's, it's a 250 word kind of bio entry. So we're not asking for, you know, complete assignments and essays, which is really important. But what we are asking for, what we are asking for is a quick, short, sharp video, a one minute video of your idea. And the reason for this is that some people find it a lot easier to convey what they're trying to achieve by either writing it or by sharing it. And that can be shared in a number of different ways. It could be you like I am now talking to a camera. So I might have my idea and I can pitch my idea, me on camera and just talking you through the necessary uh, elements of it. And we'll talk about what that look should look like. But it might be that you want to create some slides and do a voiceover. It could be you want to create a kind of interactive video where people can just sit back and watch it be like a TV adverts. Um, and of Appreciate this comes down to your knowledge and experience of being able to create this content. But we are going to share with you in this session now some of the things that you could do and how easy it can be to create that video. As simple as just using your own mobile device like an iPhone or a Samsung or whatever it is. So it's got a camera that can record. Um, that will be good enough. You can put it into kind of selfie mode if that's what it is and hold it up and record it. Or of course you can work with someone that can uh, set it up and frame it and make it a little bit more professional. But we'll talk about what the videos look like. But we are asking for everybody to create a short short one minute video and upload it. Now, what you can't do is you can't actually add it to the application. So my guidance and advice here is firstly, click on the application form, fill that in. That's the nice, simple, easy process. Um, just follow that through. It will take you probably depending on your 250 words, but realistically, probably going to take you maybe 15, 20 minutes, something like that, uh, depending on how much time you put into the 250 word bio. Then once you've entered that, um, or you're about to enter that, you need to create your video. So don't press that submit button because you need to put the URL of where your video is. You can't actually embed your video into the form. So what we would suggest you do, and we'll talk about the different types of video, is that you upload your video into something like YouTube. OK, you don't have to use YouTube. You can use other platforms, but anywhere that that video can be stored on a central server, and then you can take the URL and then pop it into the application form. So, for example, um, I create my video. We'll talk about what that looks like in a moment. I upload it into YouTube and I'll show you exactly how to do that in a moment as well. And it will give you a URL and that URL you'll pop into the application form. Then you hit the submit button. Don't submit the form without your video because we won't know afterwards. And what we don't really want is you ping in an email in after and say, oh, I forgot to attach this and stuff like that. And you won't be able to email your video across if you created it because it would just be the file will just be too large. Um, so put it into a YouTube channel um, or Vimo or something like that. And of course, you can um, use whatever platform you prefer. But YouTube is quite simple and easy to use, which we'll have a look at that in the moment. Um, let's just go through a couple of more questions. Uh, deadline for entries, Christina, uh, that we have put a deadline on this because we want to cut at that point and then we've got to make uh, the filtering process from there on. So when is the deadline? So the deadline is midday on the 20th of November 2023. So make sure you mark your calendars. 20th of November, midday. OK. So people submit 20th, 20th of November. We then get all of those fantastic applications. And last year we had in excess of 90 applications. So you can imagine from our judges point of view, we now need to filter those, uh, look through them, watch all your videos. Uh, so that's 90, possibly more. I'm hoping we're going to get over 100 entries this year. So 100 videos to filter through, uh, make notes on and report back. When will the um, entries be alerted if they've been successful and got through to the next part? So we'll be sending out notifications by 4th of January 2024. So that gives us enough time to review all the applications in detail and make sure that we choose the best ones. Yeah, that's because for the judges, they'll be working over Christmas, watching the videos uh, whilst eating their mince pies. So uh, <laughs> thank you to our judges uh, for uh, giving the time to watch these. OK, so now they've heard, but we have some really important dates that we would suggest that you check your calendar before you enter, uh, because if you're not around on one of these dates, then if you get through to the next round, 
that's the date that we're going to invite you to come along and pitch live in front of our panel of judges. And that's where you'll receive your feedback. Uh, that's where you'll receive potentially, possibly, we'll talk about in a minute, investments, um, whatever that looks like. So these dates are integral. Now, I've got them noted here. Unfortunately, we don't have Omkar here today with us, uh, but Omkar would have given us an update around uh, the dates. But I'm going to just touch on these very quickly. So if you are on ARU Chelmsford campus, um, the Magic date for you to get in your diary is Monday, the 5th of February, 2024. So we are into next year and it's going to be in the afternoon. Time to be confirmed, but it will be after lunch. So there will be, you better get your lunch and then we'll be inviting you along um, that afternoon. So make sure, Chelmsford Campus, get that date in your diary, Monday, the 5th of February. If you are a Cambridge uh, student and you're on the Cambridge campus, it's Saturday, the 10th of February. So unfortunately for you, you will have to come along on a Saturday, but that's probably better for some anyway. So make sure you've got that date in your diary, Saturday, the 10th of February. And if you're from our Peterborough campus, that's Monday, the 12th of February uh, in the afternoon. So three dates, depending on what campus you're on. Now, someone might ask the question, so I'm going to cover it here. If I'm on the Chelmsford campus and I can't do the Monday, can I be transferred across to the Cambridge campus if I get there under my own steam? Well, the answer is we will do our best, but there's no promises because it all depends on where the entries come from, uh, how they're allocated. We're going to be looking around between 10 and 12 uh, finalists, if we can call them that. It's not quite true, but 10 to 12 uh, pitches that are going to happen on those dates. So if you're Chelmsford and you can't make it, and we've already got full capacity, then there's a possibility we won't be able to divert you to one of the other campuses. We will do our best, but my advice would be, Put all three dates in your calendar, know what your home campus is and work to that one. So really, really important. Um, are we in guaranteeing investment? Uh, Catherine, I don't know if you want to mention anything on this, but if not, I'm happy to cover it. Uh, but will the students get investment? Is there a guarantee they're going to walk away with, be it £10 or £10,000 or £100,000 in their back pocket? Well, we see the Think Big AO pitching competition not just about investment. So investment might be possible if your idea is investment ready. But our panel are made up of a real business owners, a lot of them from the Federation of Small Businesses. And they are there to help you, to uh, mentor you, to guide you, to provide feedback, to help you progress your idea. Now, for those that are investment ready, there could be somebody on the panel that would be willing to invest in your business idea. Um, or if we do have a number of ideas that are investment ready, we will arrange a further panel with those investment um, opportunities. Uh, I don't know if that covers it, David, if you'd like to add any more detail on that, because David is instrumental in pulling those panels together. He's very uh, well connected with lots of networks. So we had lots of success last year on uh, mentoring and um, personal introductions from our panel members. So you just never know who might be there to help you. Yeah, no, I, I think you've covered it really well there, Catherine. I think the, the important part to really note is that, it, of course, we'd all like a little bit of investment uh, that's, you know, going to help us on our journey. But that investment can't always come uh, immediately. If you think of something like Dragon's Den that most of you would have probably watched on the TV or Shark Tank, if you're into the uh, US American version, it looks like the investment happens there and then, you know, or oh, I'll give you 50,000 or whatever they're asking for. But lots of due diligence happens before and after that. I mean, it's done for TV. So in this scenario, you come along, you'll pitch your idea. You're going to get firstly fantastic, valuable feedback, potentially connections, doors opened, uh, pointing you in the right direction, who to speak to, who can help you. And maybe one of those uh, judges, our panel, our dragons, might express an interest and say, look, I'm willing to work with you and help you. And the investment might come, you know, months down the line before they're ready to invest, because you might not be investment ready at that stage. It might need a little bit more polishing. It might need to take your idea in a slightly different direction. But for me, it's really important that you get that support, whether that's offered in the ARU enterprise programs and the great stuff that we can offer internally, or whether that is signposted and connected with an external through our great uh, panel of judges. So yes, you're not guaranteed investments, but there's opportunity to seek investment, definitely 100%. Uh, 
Um, so I think that's kind of answered quite a lot of our questions uh, that might arise. But if people have got questions uh, following watching this video or being here live with us today, how can they get in touch? Uh, Christina, uh, how can people get in touch? Yes. So students or recent graduates, they can email us at startupsupport at airu.ac.uk and they can let us know what questions they have and we'll be very happy to answer them. Brilliant. Or and just stop us on campus. We are free. So that, that's free what I was, that's what I was going to say. They can, if they see you walking around, they can grab you and ask the question. Uh, and Abhinav, uh, typically you're on the Chelmsford campus. If they come walking down the corridor, they could come and find. But Abhinav, is there any way they can find you on campus in Chelmsford if they want to have a conversation with you directly? What's the best way of getting in touch with yourself? Uh, absolutely. They can. Uh, so I'll be on campus um, throughout the week. Also, they can get in touch with me by sending an email uh, at uh, to, to my, e my email, which is abhinav um, micra at gmail uh, at sorry at ar dot ac dot uk. Brilliant. What we do is with all these links and stuff like that. Yeah. So the entry form we're put into the uh, chat here, so you can obviously click on that and pick up on that as well. Um, and if you do have questions, do target those questions to the relevant people. Uh, we are here to help you and support you. So um, anything we can do, we will do that. Catherine, yes. Just a question. Thank you, David, for talking about how um, our entrants can um, provide their video links. Now, some people might not want to have that in a public arena. So we talked about YouTube. So can you make that private? Yeah, great question. And you can. And what I'm going to hopefully do, and this is the wonders of technology, I'm going to try to demonstrate how to quickly create a very, very quick video uh, um, using Canva. So I'm going to show Canva, but that's not the only way. Do remember, you could just use one of these devices. Oh, there it is there. Just your mobile phone uh, using the video camera if you want to do it um, kind of to camera, you speaking to camera. But I'm going to show you a couple of different options this morning. Then I'm going to show you how to upload that video and to make it private that it can't be seen. Only people with the link can access it. And that's the important part because that link you're going to put into the application form. Um, and that's how we, as uh, the judges, will be able to access your video. So let's just talk a little bit more about that then, Catherine. Let's talk about that, that one minute video that we're asking everybody to make. It is a huge advantage if you do it. Now, I appreciate someone might go, I don't want to do a video. I can't speak to camera. I don't have the time to do it. If you don't upload that video, I'm not saying you won't get through, um, but it's going to be a disadvantage because we're not going to be able to hear you, see you or understand your idea as effectively as you can communicate it with that video. We know from past uh, pitching competitions that we've done, the one minute video is super powerful. So, if you're going to create a video and it's going to be you talking, you could use your webcam like I'm doing today and record it locally to your computer. You could use your mobile device, an iPad or something equivalent. And think about that. Script out what it is you're going to say. What we don't want you is kind of step reading off the script, talking to the camera and we can see you're doing that. We want it to be very natural where possible. So a bit of planning, practice um, and preparation is going to be super key. For any of you that have been along my pitching con, uh, pitching days, uh, we talk about planning, preparation and practice. But think about what it is you're going to say before you hit that all important record button. When you're ready, you might end up doing three, four, five, 10, 20, 30, maybe 50 takes. Um, but it's normally the first one that you do. It's the best one. Um, but do try making a couple of them and seeing what one works for you. I would recommend if you are going to be doing it on your webcam, just declutter your background, put a virtual background up, something like that. Um, if you think about your lighting, make sure we can hear you, your microphone works, we can see you, your camera's working, the background lighting, you're not sitting in front of a window, so you're just a black silhouette because the bright light behind you. So the, the kind of common things that we need to do, even if we're on a Teams call or a virtual call, but then you can create your video. So I could do it like I am now. Imagine I'm creating this video and recording it, talking to the camera and try to look down the camera and talk to the camera as much as you can as well because at the end of the day you're kind of presenting to the audience at the other end of the camera so that's option one um, if you're going to use a mobile device yes you could put it in selfie mode and we've had someone in the past that's literally been walking along on their way to university recording it and it worked really well um, they got their idea across but it was done in a very kind of um, kind of fun energetic way but the other best way is maybe get a tripod uh, pop it up on a tripod or work with somebody that can hold as still as they can uh, the mobile device, the camera and record it. 
But do remember, do a quick test. Check the audio. Can you be heard? If you're outside, think of wind noise. Certainly this time of year, probably more like rain noise. But just think about uh, reducing that ambient noise. So try and work in a, a, a quiet space. That's going to be good. To be honest, the audio in most of these mobile devices is pretty good these days, as long as you're not standing 30 feet away. If they're standing maybe six to eight feet in front of you, the camera's good. I used to say, get yourself a little lapel mic or something like that. But I think the cameras in most modern phones today are pretty good enough to, as long as the ambient noise is not too noisy, it works well. So create your video. Now, what are we looking for? Regardless of the video, if you're doing it to the camera or you're doing an audio uh, recording with slides or something like that, we want to understand your idea. Now, we're not necessarily looking for profit and loss and figures at this particular time, because I appreciate you might not understand the full finances. We're going to help you and support you. But as much information you can tell us is going to be important. So firstly, who are you? Um, that's always a good place to start. Who are you? What is your business idea? So tell us a little bit more about the idea. Tell us a little of a story that comes with it. How did you come up with the idea? But do bear in mind, you've got one minute and that will go super quick. So important details are key. And the important part is, what is your idea? Who is it going to help? What problem does it solve? That, to me, is the important part. That's what we need to understand. Now, if you can give us a little bit more around that, how big is the market? You know, if, if this product, if we could bring it to market, you know, uh, in Cambridge locally, it will change the lives of a thousand people or 10,000 people globally, a million people. Just tell us a little bit more about the solution it's providing and who it's going to help. Who are your competition? Do you have competition? I think you will. But who are that competition? Um, don't try and list off all your competition because, again, you're going to run out of time. But just say we do have competition in this field. And an example of this is X, Y and Z. So just give us an understanding of who that is. If you've kind of got a bit around the finances, tell us how much it costs or the anticipated cost of building, manufacturing or providing. And on the flip side, how much you could sell it for, what you know from your research that a similar product out there would sell for £10, £50, £500. So we've got a scale. We understand what it's going to cost, what you're going to sell it for. And can we kind of get the idea of what that could look like as profitability. But it's quite short. One minute, that's all you've got. And you've got to try and squeeze all this in. So pick out the important information. Um, don't spend too much time telling us about who you are. Just a quick introduction. I'm David Bell, a student here at Anglin Ruskin. And my big idea is straight into it, um, because otherwise you'll be telling us about yourself for 30 seconds and losing the opportunity to talk about the idea. So that could be done straight to camera. Just think about, as I say, where you film it, being able to see you and hear you. Now, let's look at another option here. I'm just going to quickly, very quickly share my screen um, and I'm just going to show you something like Canva. Now, many of you have probably used Canva or hopefully used Canva in the past. If you haven't, Canva.com is a great tool. Now, I'm going to do this. Uh, let me just go to a window and find the right one. Here we go. So you should see on my screen now uh, my Canva window. Uh, which should be there. And I've just logged in. Uh, this is my Canva account. But I'm going to show you very quickly how we can make a quick, short, sharp presentation. One minute, maybe with some slides and stuff like that. Um, quite quickly, once you sign up to Canva, you can use the free version, by the way. There is a, an app that you can download and use on your iPhone or tablets. I'm not using the app here because I want to be able to share the screen. So I'm actually logged in to the actual desktop version via a browser. But you can see I've just typed in the search box video. OK, and it's come up here. And very quickly, it's now brought up loads of different templates. Now, you can be big and bold and start with a blank template if you wish to do so. But if you want to be, um, you know, just use something that's already created, you can look down all these amazing templates that you could use. And I'm going to quickly pick on one of these just to give you a taster. OK, you will need to play with it. You'll need to change it up, dress it up, make it yours. I'm going to take this one here. OK, uh, no particular reason. It's just, it just looks good. Um, and let's just go with that. So I'm going to just go customize this template. I don't want to open it up in the app. Let's keep it in the browser. 
So the benefit of this, it started to create a template for us. And it's got this video that's in here. And as you can see, I'm just going to quickly press the play button. You can see it's fully animated. Now we can start to uh, edit this and change this and create our own version if we wish to do so. Um, very simply, if we, we can add in other slides into here, but we want to create our own little video. So let me just show you that. I'm just going to create a blank slide for a second. And what I want to do is actually record myself uh, straight on here. So I'm hoping if they haven't moved things around, we can go into here and here we go. So we hit on video. We go up to here and it says record yourself. OK, um, I'm going to hit this button. I haven't got a pitch worked out, but you would have done all of this. So I'm going to hit the record button. I'm hoping it's going to come up and allow me to. There we are. Look, you can see me on the canvas screen as well now. Now, if I wanted to share my screen, maybe I had some slides or something, I can use uh, camera and screen as well and pick a particular desktop. But for this demo, I'm just going to have myself here in this little box. OK, I can resize this if I wish to do so. Uh, I can change it, move it, but I'm just going to leave it down there in the corner. And you'll see why. Now, this is recording. So imagine this was my pitch as I've been talking you through. And once I get to a point, I can then hit the record button. Sorry, it wasn't recording. So here we go. So now recording my all exciting big pitch for the Think Big Pitching competition. And this is where I'm going to share with you my great idea, tell you a little bit about me, David Bell, the old in residence for Anglin Ruskin University, and record what my idea is and the things that I've just explained. Keep an eye on the timer down here. You can see it's at 17, 18, it's counting up. I can pause it. So if you do get stuck, hit the pause button, take a quick breath, and then carry on and carry on recording. Once I finish recording and I've got myself into that one minute, don't worry if you overrun, you can snip and change this within the application, but try to aim to record it to exactly one minute. I'm going to stop now, just rather than me waffling on. This is your pitch time, by the way. I hit the done button. That has now recorded. Just hit the save and exit. OK, here we go. So I'm now recording my all exciting. And there it is. So I've now got the video that I've made in the bottom corner. But now I maybe want to put a slide or something else behind this so I can now start to build. I'm not going to go into how to do all of this, but you're going to get the idea. Let me just say I want to put a photo behind there. And my big idea. Oh, I'll just use dogs. It's there. And my big idea is all about dogs. I can drag in my picture. OK, if you can use PowerPoint, you can use Canva. And I'm probably teaching you to suck eggs because I know lots of you know how to do this already. I'll just send that to the back um, so it's not. Uh, there we go. So me, my video is still over the top and you can play around with it and size it. So what you can now do is you can build out slides. OK, if I want to add another slide on here, I can add a, you know another slide over the top of it or I can extend this slide. So playing around with this is a great way of creating your video. Now, once I've created my perfect video with my various slides as I'm talking over them, I need to output this. This is just uploading at the moment, but very quickly I can go to here, go to the share button. I can do download, which is what I want to do. It's a video, MP4 video, OK, because that's how I need it. It's a video because I need it with my video playing with my slides behind and I hit the download button and that's now going to download it to my local computer. Now, why that's downloading, I'm just going to let that download in the background. I'm going to just quickly show you YouTube. So I'm logged into my YouTube account. If you don't have a YouTube account, which I'd imagine you all have, but if you don't have one, you can just simply sign up via YouTube, username, password, no money required. Set yourself up a YouTube account. Now, once you sign up to your YouTube account, yes, you can watch everyone else's stuff, but this is where I want you to be able to upload your video. And how does it work? Top right hand corner up here, you've got a little picture of a camera. It says create. Click on that and it gives us an option to go live. We don't want to do that. We're not brave enough for that today, but we want to go upload video. Hit the upload video button. It then gives me a option to select files for find them on my computer or drag and drop. Now I'm just going to jump back and see if that video has finished. It's still uploading. Let's not panic. Let's select a file. Now, if the one that I've downloaded was there and ready to go, I would search for it. Now, I, good news is I have lots of videos on here, so I'm just going to pick a video. It doesn't really matter what it is because I'm going to upload it and then delete it. Um, here we go. Here's a video I created uh, in the past. You can see, actually, probably just about to see. It's got the little video in the corner. This is all about password protection. So I'm just going to upload that video. Now, this is uploading. Here's a few important parts. So why that video is uploading in the background, I can give it a title. 
Okay, it takes the file name title first off, but if you want to rename it, so it's David Bell's Think Big Hitch, that's what I would call it. I can give it a description. Don't panic too much about this, but if you want to give us a little bit more information, please do so in there. But because you're not publishing this live, all you're doing is going to be putting this up there for your our, our use and your own use. You don't need to worry too much about the description. Just like you won't need to worry too much about the thumbnail, just let it select the thumbnail it creates. Um, this is where we can now create a playlist where you want to save it. So I've got lots of different playlists here. You can create a new playlist, um, give it a playlist name, and just call it for your own reference, Think Big. Okay. Um, and we want to change it to private. Okay. So that's now private. We hit the create button, creates that playlist, and just hit done. It's done. There we go. Now I need to click next. I don't need to change too much on here. OK, so I'm just going to hit next. Uh, don't worry about subtitles or anything like that. So you can just jump through to next. It's going to do some checks. OK, don't panic about this. It's only going to come up with copyright issues if you've used music in the background. Uh, maybe, uh, your, I don't know, your favorite Bross album or something like that, whatever it might be. Show me age. Um, but whatever your album is or the music, then it might come up with a copyright issue. Don't worry because you're not publishing it into YouTube for everybody to see. It's private. So if it does come up with a copyright issue. It doesn't make any difference. But the chances are it won't because it's just going to be you talking or you sharing. It's only for music, typically, or video content that you've stolen from, I don't know, the BBC or something like that. So at this point, you can just click next. Um, and here, this is the quite important part. Um, this is where we need to make sure we don't have it public. If you do have it public, you're welcome to if you want to share it with everybody. And that means anybody can see it by in YouTube. But if you want to keep it private, um, you can basically set it to only people that you uh, want to share it with. Now, the downside to doing it totally private like this is that you won't get a URL to actually share because you have to put in there an email address, i.e. a Google account. So that doesn't work well. So my advice is list it as unlisted, which means no one can find it by searching. The only people can access it is if they have this link here on the right hand side. So as long as you only give it to us, we will not share it with anybody else. So the only people that can see it will be our judges. So unlisted is where we want to be. I want to copy this link here You can click on the little copy bit button or you can just highlight it, whatever works for you. I just click on copy. So I've now copied that and I hit the save button. And that is now uploaded. Depending on your internet connection, by the way, depends on how quick it will upload. The standard definition, which is just the basic version, will upload really, really quick. As you can see, it's taking a lot longer to upload the high definition version, but it will get there. It's automated. At this point, I can just close and not worry about it anymore. But what I can do to check if it's worked, I'm going to open another tab and I can paste that URL in. And there's the video. Been say to me. OK, there's the video you just saw me upload. It's not my big pitch one, but it's the video I just uploaded a moment ago. And that's now sitting in YouTube as a private video. OK, so only people you can see here, it says down here unlisted. So only can people access it with that link. Now, go back to the form that you filled in. Um, there's a box there where you need to paste this URL that you've copied into that form. Once you've pasted it in there, you filled out your form, hit the submit button, and it will end up in our mailbox ready to be looked at. And you are in. So hopefully that's covered uh, how to create your video either using your mobile device. And of course, if you filmed it on a mobile, when you come to upload it in the YouTube channel, so I just go back here, hit the create button, upload videos. You'll just search for that video, that MP4 video that you've created on your mobile device. Um, you'll just search for it and load it in just like I showed you. Um, if you're only working from your mobile device, you can download YouTube on your mobile and you can do exactly the same. Hit upload video, find it on your mobile, typically in your photo gallery or your album and hit upload and it will upload it from there as well well one more thing you can do in youtube you can edit it um in youtube so if you've created your video um and you kind of did it to the camera uh, if you're doing it in canva you'd kind of do all the editing in there wouldn't you get it nicely lined up but if you're doing it on your mobile you can edit it in the something like the imovie application 
um, but you can bring it into YouTube. And once it's into YouTube, you can go in and actually do some editing within the YouTube platform as well. OK, so there is an option to come in here. So I'm just going into the video that this is the one I uploaded a moment ago. That you saw me do into the Think Big folder and come in here and go to editor. And it now gives me an option to kind of go into the video. And if I need to start it a bit later or cut a bit out, I can do that. OK, so I've got trim and cut here so I can cut parts of the video out. If I want to make it shorter because I've overrun or there was a bit of waffle. Um, you can go in here and it's a very basic editor, but it allows you just maybe to cut the ends off or piece out in the middle that you don't want to be seen. OK, just to be also I'm going to just close out of this, bring myself back to the big screen. Um, just to be also very honest with you, we're not looking for perfection on video creation. You know, it's not about creating, you know, the all singing, all dancing, amazing video. What we're looking for is what you're sharing with us, the content. So as I say, the person that walked down the road I mentioned earlier, who's filming it as he's walking to ARU on a selfie cam, tell us about his idea. It worked. We got the idea. He communicated it perfectly and it actually got him through into the finals. So it can work. It can. It doesn't have to be perfectly polished and amazing. Of course, if you want to add time and make it fantastic, then brilliant. But we're not looking, we're not marking you on your video production skills. Not today, anyway. Unless your idea is, by the way, video production company, then that might make us look at the video you've created. So hopefully that's been useful. Um, Catherine, um, is there anything I need to add to that? Or Christina, look, who, who put the hand up out of you two? Christina. <laughs> So I have a question, David. What about if I already own a business? Am I still eligible to enter the competition? Yes. Why not? Yeah, no, if you've got some some people will just have ideas and it won't be a business. Some people will have a business idea that maybe is already trading, maybe low scale. They've just started out. They are a startup. Um, then, yes, we'd still love you to enter. Of course, Please don't enter if you're turning over a million pound a year and super successful already. Um, as much as we would love to have that conversation with you, please get in touch with us because you could be a judge for us. Um, so if you are running a business um, and actually entering the competition is not for you because you don't need that support. But what you'd love to do is help us then reach out to the team because we could certainly do with the, the help on one of our judging panels, if not for this particular competition, our ones next year as well. Thank you, David. And just to say that your business might be you as a freelancer. So we do welcome applications from anybody who's looking to go into freelancing. So please, uh, if you're a creative, we would love to see see your work and your on your business idea around that as well. Yeah, yeah very, very point. Um, it doesn't have to be when I talk some point talk about ideas, people think inventions or products. You know, it doesn't have to be that it could be a service offering. Are you a freelancer offering consultancy services or something along those lines? Uh, you've got an idea still. Um, for me, that idea is about how you're going to help people do something better. If you're a freelancer or a consultant, maybe you're an artist uh, as a freelancer and maybe you're a photographer. Um, this is all about giving you the help and the support to get your business off the ground. And in some cases, by the way, it's not about the money because some people will enter this competition uh, for investment finance because that's what they need to launch their product or uh, service offering. Others will be entering it because they just need support and help and guidance. So if you do need um, really worth mentioning, if you're in your little one minute video, if you're seeking investment, tell us how much it is. Not promise anything you're going to get it. But if you turn around and say, well, I'm looking for 100 grand, at least we've got an idea. We might want to know a little bit more how you're going to spend it. But if it's not about the money, tell us, I'm looking for a fantastic mentor that can give me some guidance. That will be super useful for us to understand what you are looking to achieve uh, from entering the competition as well. Any questions from those that are here with us uh, this morning? Of course, if you're joining this on catch up, um, you'll have to direct your questions uh, via email, um, please do, or via the Teams chat. If this is remaining in Teams for those that watch it on Teams, uh, you'll be able to pop a question in there as well. I'm hoping it's been useful. Um, we're here to help. If you need any help with your videos, do reach out. Uh, we do have uh, Omkar, who's great at anything that comes down to video. Just don't let him put you in front of the camera uh, because he will be interviewing you for the next ARU um, 
podcast or something like that. Uh, you'll be super famous before you know it. And if you haven't seen it, by the way, do watch uh, Catherine and Christina's interview. Uh, I think it's all over the ARU website and on the YouTube channels and stuff like that. Um, that might give you inspiration, maybe. That is another really good thing. You could do a Q&A for your video. If you're a bit worried about being on camera on your own, bring someone and get them to ask the questions. So who are you? I'm David Bell. Tell us a little bit about your idea. My idea is X, Y, and Z. So you could make it like an interview fake focus as well. Um, lots of different ways of doing it. Be creative, um, be innovative, come up with something maybe a little bit different as well. Thank you, David. So anybody who's watching on Catch Up, you can contact our team through startup support at aiu.ac.uk. So please do not hesitate to get in touch if you've got any questions or need some support with that form and video. Brilliant. Well, I think that may conclude. I haven't seen any other virtual hands go up, so that may conclude us. Um, and if you're watching this, don't forget we are running the Kane program, um, which I'm not going to go into too much detail. But if you're not on that, it's worth looking up every Wednesday at the moment from five o'clock till six thirty. Great for freelancers, uh, great for enterprises, uh, people that are thinking about creating an enterprise, and also really good if you're setting up a not-for-profit uh, and you're looking for guidance on that as well. Uh, do look those up. Uh, Cambridge, Mab222, off the top of my head, I think we're running them out. Uh, LAB, 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 yeah, LAB yeah. 222. Um, so come along and join us. Uh, you do need to register. Um, but again, get in touch with us. and We can help you with that as well. But great to give you loads of tools to help you with your startup idea. That's it. That's it. We're done. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. Thank you for joining everybody. And uh, we look forward to receiving your applications. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.